Have you ever wondered what would happen if you mix Mythbusters with The Walking Dead? We are Zombie Go Boom! Filmmakers and zombie survival enthusiasts. Using our scientifically accurate zombie heads, we put retail weapons, homemade weapons, and everyday objects to the test in order to see what will save you during the zombie apocalypse. Survive, protect, and kick undead ass! Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom, the bloodiest show on YouTube. I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And we have a very special episode for you. That's right, a while ago on the Zombie Survivor Show, we asked you guys to design either a tomahawk or an axe, and the winner of that design contest would have their axe or tomahawk made in real life by Mitchell Design and Fabrication. Link in the description below. And we found a winner. His name is Benedict Cause, and this was the weapon that he created. It's this Dwemer-looking thing from Elder Scrolls and it's super sharp super awesome and to find out a little bit more about it let's take a look at the tale of the tape so we held a contest for you guys to design either a tomahawk or an axe and out of hundreds of entries we had a winner designed by Benedict Cause and constructed by Mitchell design and fabrication we bring you what we have been calling the circle hatchet Though one fan said it resembles the Dwemer Axe from Elder Scrolls, which is a pretty sweet coincidence if I do say so myself. The axe is 16 and a half inches or 42 centimeters in length overall, and it sports a 6 and a half inch or 16 and a half centimeter diameter blade with a mirror finish and a saber grind all the way around the edge. The 1045 carbon steel used on this creation has been heat treated to a Rockwell hardness of 40 and the scales around its full tang are made of hard wood. This is the first weapon we've ever had on Zombie Go Boom, 100% designed and created by ZGB fans specifically for zombie destruction. If you're interested in owning this or any other design your heart desires, Mitchell's contact info is in the description below. Now it's time to do some cutting tests before seeing if it has what it takes to make a Zombie Go Boom. That's four layers of cardboard. sound when it flies through the air <laughs> yeah cool. and it stays it stays aligned Vertical, which yeah. is uh, pretty pretty awesome this is really fun to throwing and absolutely nothing to the blade no chipping no rolling nothing all right Charles the executioner faults what is your plan of attack for this first strike well first I'm gonna do a snap cut then we're gonna review the damage and move on from there three two one Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it hit me. Desiree got hit. Where did it hit you? Alright, so it wasn't a super powerful hit, but it was a little bit more than a snap cut. How much would you say in per percentage wise as far as like 100% being a really solid hit and what you did there? I think it was about 25-30%. 25-30% and just that was able to get through four inches of this really really tough plastic composite you see this is one of our older heads and this one wasn't made very well so the cranial cavity in it is actually very very small which means that the skull is very 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 ridiculously ridiculously thick especially here in this front part of the head 
but uh, just the fact that a 25% hit was able to do this much damage and break all the way down into the cranial cavity regardless of how dense this particular head is is a testament to just how badass that weapon is all right charles what are you going to do next i'm going to do a horizontal strike to the front of the face here i'm going to see if i can cut the top of his head off without breaking his neck all right All right, we didn't make this particular head, but what looks to have happened is the cranial cavity collapsed under the weight of the rest of this plastic composite. And basically that's what Charles had to get through on the first cut. And that's what Charles had to get through on the second cut. So no, this isn't exactly an accurate test, but it's a lot more difficult to do this than it would be to actually be able to perform well during an accurate test. So this is a testament to that weapon. We may retest it in the future, but right now, as you can see, it's performing very, very well. Why don't we just let you go crazy and see how much damage you can actually do to this thing. Let's do it. There it is. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god, that is so weird. That is so bizarre. All right, so we torture tested it, we threw it, we went against a ridiculously thick Ivan head, much thicker than anything else we've ever used before, and the edge is still as sharp as it's always been. There is no rolling, there is no chipping, there is nothing. This thing is ridiculously resilient, so that's a positive that I will say about it. And the design is nice because when throwing, you are going to get it to stick most of the time because you have so much blade that can potentially stick regardless of your distance. And since you have that much blade, you could use it in very creative ways, especially if you're fighting a fellow survivor, like you could actually punch with it. You know, probably don't want to do that with a zombie, but against a person, that's enough. You could also use it flat, break somebody. Charles was saying you could set it to stun or you could set it to kill, which is really cool. Now let's talk about the negatives. Yeah, the only thing really that bothered me was the fact that the uh, handle here is just really round. And so it, it makes it to where whenever you strike something, it, the, the weapon tends to move left or right, and which makes a second strike pretty much impossible. And the same thing makes it so that it's really difficult to gauge your edge alignment yeah. you know if it were like a hammer or a machete something a little bit more ergonomic then it would be easy to know where the blade is just by feeling it you can't do that by feeling this you actually have to look at it you know what i mean yeah. so there's a chance that you could hold it like this accidentally and then when you strike this way yeah it's gonna turn on you it's not gonna do as much damage as it would normally so that is a problem. Also, this isn't really flush. The scales aren't flush, but that's more of an aesthetic kind of a thing. Other than that, it's just beautiful. It has a mirror finish, it's just amazing. Yeah, all in all, I really like this weapon. Um, I would use this weapon myself uh, if the handle were redesigned and a little bit more ergonomic, you know. Mm -hmm. But the weight is good. Yep. Um, it would be a really good indoor weapon because it's not long. You're not gonna get, you know, snagged. You're not gonna, you're not gonna snag it against other things, just indoors or somewhere, you know, when you're close to a tree or something. You know, with a katana, this would not be a good position for me. 
Yeah, plus a snap cut with this thing does a lot more damage than, than a normal small weapon like this. Yeah, if we had tested this against the regular Ivan head, especially the new Ivan heads that are more anatomically correct and more realistic when it comes to actually, you know, showing you what would happen if you did this to either a human or a zombie skull, this thing would be a one-hit kill just oh, yeah. from the wrist. Yeah, it would probably go right through the whole skull. Yeah, and we'll probably retest it again just yeah. to see if we can throw and kill a zombie with it and then also just test it in a more accurate simulant. But um, from what we've done today, I would definitely give this thing the overkill seal of destruction. For real, I agree. If you want to see more axes, we have a ton of them in the description below. Always check the description. I'm so glad I was wearing gloves. I accidentally brushed that blade right there. That could have been an injury. I'll anyway, keep it over here. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> check the description. Oh, now I'm choking on my own hair. Check the description below. There are a lot of videos there. The more you watch, the better. Uh, and I hope you really enjoyed this one. Please make sure you punch the living crap out of that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you enjoy what we do, that's a great way to support the show without spending any money and with another mind-blowing episode from zombie go boom i'm chuck moray i'm charles fultz and we will see you next time